Hi, I'm live. Wow, I'm live. Okay, it took me a few minutes to set up and um, I guess I'm on now. So there were a few people who had questions for me earlier and I've got them put aside for now because I was remembering what day it is and thinking <clears throat> there's going to be a lot of people out there who are worried about Valentine's Day. Uh, Valentine's Day being a day of love and a day of presents and a day of chocolate and flowers and I hate it and I just thought well let's do a video around that too and I'm also doing my raise your vibration boot camp which I've just extended the early bird until Sunday and uh, so if you're here write a comment say hi let me know if you have any questions and uh, it's really really good to do Facebook lives I really enjoy them so hopefully you can hear me I've got a couple of people on live now what I'm gonna do is bring healing into this video and then the replay will be here and you can listen to it again. You can ask your questions below again or you can send me an email if um, you feel it's more personal. And yeah, cause you know, Facebook is kind of open. Everything that you post on Facebook can be seen. Even if you think it's only going to your friends, it could be going to friends of friends too. So don't worry if you have a question, you can, you can email it to me or you can join one of my energy healing groups. So, Valentine's Day and why I hate it. Well, the focus is on buying stuff, buying cards, going out for dinner, showing your appreciation and gratitude and love to somebody else through spending money. And honestly, you know, you, you, it, what happens is it backfires because you're waiting for them to spend money on you. And maybe they have other things on their mind. Maybe they're preoccupied with, you know, family illness or problems with work or things. And then there's always resentment and disgruntled feelings around not being seen, not being heard. And you know what? That goes deeper than buying a card, buying chocolates and going out for dinner, especially if you can't get a booking in the restaurant that you wanted to go to. So the issue really is what's love all about really anyway? And can you love somebody else unconditionally? And those are the deeper questions. And if you're brave enough to look at that, to realize that unconditional love actually starts with you. And can you love yourself unconditionally? Because many people are like, well, I want them to love me unconditionally. I love them unconditionally. And then I say, okay. But if you have closed off to yourself, if there's a space in your heart which is closed to you, then you can't get in there. Then why would somebody else be able to get in there? So the whole idea of unconditional love coming through another person because they've decided or they haven't decided, for me, it's bigger than that. For me, unconditional love is outside of ourselves. Unconditional love is all around us. And where we lock ourselves out of our heart, we also prevent unconditional love from coming through us. So if you're listening now and you'd like to really feel unconditional love, you have to start with all the reasons why you don't feel it already. So just take a minute and put your feet flat on the ground and take a breath. Breathe in and breathe out and relax. Say, okay, where am I closing myself off to love? That's the question we should be asking ourselves, not why did he not buy me a box of chocolates and come home with flowers? No, where am I closing myself off to love? And you know what you could do? You could dedicate Valentine's Day to just sitting with that question. Where am I closing myself off to love? Then you could go that bit deeper and say, well, why? Well, I've been hurt, I've been disappointed. And I go, yes, because I'm putting it on to somebody else to give me the love that I am not giving to myself. Now, it's very hard for you, for anyone, for me, to say, I love myself. You know, and it's not about saying it and not meaning it. It's about saying it and allowing it in. Say, okay, well, if I can't love myself the way I would like to, see how that feels different? I can't love myself the way I would like to, so I'm gonna make space for love to come in and soften all of my hard edges because it's the hard edges inside that make you unlovable. And then when you can soften inside and you're soft with yourself and you move with love and you bring love through you and you love coming out from you, you become lovable. 
and then people want to be with you not just on Valentine's Day. They don't need to run out and buy a card and come and tell you you're the most amazing person. That's all just surface level. And you know, take it or leave it. I, I like to leave it. But and you feel that love outside of you and you say, I'm gonna soften and let it in. Can you try it now? Try it now and see what that feels like. So soften. And as you start to soften, maybe you might notice how hard you're actually holding yourself, you know, how hard are your shoulders? Are they softer? Are they tight? Are they hard? Soften and open. How hard are you holding your face really tight? Soften. And then there's a lack of trust, lack of trust with letting love in and I'm going to cry and it's going to sweep me over and it's going to overwhelm me and you say, no, only as much as I can handle. Say it now. Only as much as I can handle, I want to let love in. So we're having our own Valentine's Day moment here. It doesn't matter if it's Valentine's Day now. It's the moment. It's bringing your presence into the moment, into your body, and realizing, oh, my gosh, I really have been hard. I really do have hard edges. What can I do about that? Soften. <sighs> so breathe with me and soften. And breathe in. And breathe out and soften. Oh, and let go. So... If you're here and you want to say hi, ask me a question. We're going to just breathe in, breathe out and soften together. I'm doing this live on my computer, so I'm having, I'm not seeing how, you know, who's here or anything. So I'm going to see maybe scrolling down or their comments coming in. I have a bunch of questions from some people that asked me earlier. So it's, excuse me while I fix my glasses because being sensitive to things a stray hair loose can really annoy me which is very funny so i'm going to read out one of these questions i'm not going to read who they're from because these can be quite personal okay in all the work i'm doing so this is a question from one of you in all the work i'm doing through energy healing self-care therapy etc etc i can't seem to get to the core of who i am anymore or clarify my wants and goals it feels like the days go by without me making any impact. I'm just existing and doing what needs to get done to live my life. So many people seem to have a plan. I'm just going to stop reading there and say, what is it they say about plans? We make plans and God laughs. Hi, Arita. Hi, Nicola. It's funny. We make plans and God laughs. I see so many people seem to have a plan. I feel like I'm running out of time. I'm not a complete slug. I think that's funny. I accomplish certain things, but I yearn for a burning purpose to jump out of bed in the morning. How did my world become so small? It's not interesting. So in the beginning, the question is, I'm doing all the energy healing, all the self-care, all the therapy, but are you really doing it or are you just going through the motions? That's the first thing I would ask you because you can say, I'm softening my body and I'm letting love in. You can say it, but are you doing it? Are you slowing down? Are you bringing your full presence and awareness into the moment, into your body, and allowing yourself to feel what you're feeling? Allowing all the difficult emotions to rise up and be released. Knowing that you're the mountain and your emotions are whether you are not your emotions allows you to root down and not feel like you're going to get knocked over. So I'm doing all the energy healing, self-care therapy, et cetera, et cetera. I can't seem to get to the core of who I am anymore. Again, I'm feeling that you're putting a lot of it out there outside of you. The core of who you are is always there. It is the mountain and your emotions are the weather. It sounds like you're disconnected. Maybe you're doing too much. Are you doing too much? Feels like the days go by without me making any impact. Impact to what? What are your expectations? Now, I was at a Carolyn Miss workshop and Carolyn Miss got a question from the audience who said, I'm old, so this woman was old. I'm old, I'm retiring, I'm gonna move in to my garden and do nothing all day. I'm gonna read books and look at my roses, is that enough? And she goes, yes, and everybody goes, what? And she's like, next question. And then, no, 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 go back, go back. I'm gonna sit in the garden, I'm gonna enjoy my roses, I'm gonna do knitting, I'm gonna read books, I'm gonna to listen to music, is that enough? Yes, it's enough. What are your expectations around an impact? What is an impact that you want to make? You are here, you are alive. Your life is between you and God, or if you don't like that word God, it's between you and the universe, or a great spirit. However you see 
our creator, the divine life force essence that runs through you, the unconditional love, that source that you keep blocking from yourself. What is it you're trying to prove? You exist. You exist and that's enough. So you've lost your core, your sense of your core and you need a purpose in you because you're going outside of yourself. When I read this question the first time, what came to mind also was the amount of energy interference that we are all experiencing at the moment. So when I say energy interference, I'm talking about news and media and psychic viruses which pull you into Facebook because you have to see what's going on all around the world and that takes you away from your inner self, your inner sanctum, your inner core as well. So simplify your life, simplify your expectations. Maybe you're already doing it. Maybe you're already there and your expectations are telling you that you should have achieved these things and you haven't done them yet and you're useless and you're a waste of time and all of this kind of thing. And I just say to that voice kindly, you're not mine and I let you go because all I need to do is sit in my garden and read a book and enjoy my roses, drink my tea and be at peace. So I hope that helps. I hope that helps. You don't need a plan. You don't need to do anything. And when you have that energy back because you're not trying to prove or push or force, things just go that little bit more smoothly for you. Okay, here's another question from you and it's so good to see you and I'm gonna get back to some of your questions. Hello, for Anna from Sweden. Having a really hard time loving myself, being patient with myself, putting away the big stick I steep my, beat myself up with, having compassion and forgiveness for myself, really hard not to feel hopeless, useless and helpless and over the hill. And again, I'm coming back to astrology and we're being bashed and beaten up by all of these planets who are beaming down all of their influences on us. So we have to carry those and because we can't see them, because it's not in our weather forecast, because our weather forecast just it's gonna rain, it's gonna sun, it's gonna be cold those energies are still there. Maybe all you can do is just be with how you feel. So let's just do it now. Just slow down and be, bring your awareness from outside of you into your body and say, okay, I'm having trouble being patient with myself. So I'm gonna slow down and I'm gonna be patient with the part of me that's having trouble being patient with me. See, take another step back. Which part of me is having trouble? being patient with me which part of me is that and then just stop and soften is it your inner child little three-year-old is it a seven-year-old is it your inner teenager she or he having trouble being patient with you is probably more around teenager or could it be a 20 year old you I thought you were gonna have achieved so much more than this by the time you're this age relax look at the world you're alive okay you're alive and that's enough you're here and that's enough. Put yourself off the hook and say, okay, I'm having a hard time loving myself. Goes right back to what I said about Valentine's Day. Right back to what we say about unconditional love. What are the blocks that you're putting up to receiving love? Start there. Take a minute. Put your hand on your heart. Anyone who's, who's watching this, put your hand on your heart right now and breathe. And why not bring in some healing? I'm gonna invite in my healing guides and if anybody who wants to receive healing right now, whether this be the live or the replay, say yes, please. I open to receive the healing that's coming to me right now. Just say yes inside yourself. And imagine all these angels coming in and you can hand your pain over to them. Let them step inside your heart as if your heart was a little house or a cavern or a cave and let them fill you up with love and those pieces of your soul that you lost through all of the difficult times and all of the things you experienced. You're so hard on yourself and you're stripping away pieces of yourself every time you criticize yourself. Feel yourself filling up now. Tell me how you're feeling. Allow yourself to fill up. An empty cup, fill yourself up with love. It's coming, it's pouring in if you let it. One of my favorite lines from the diary, I have it beside me just in case I needed a 2020 diary, I think was, although oh my God, I don't believe it, I opened it to that exact page, May, okay? So obviously there's still time for you to buy this if you want to, and can you see that? I had a dream, somebody left flowers at my doorstep when I woke up, I realized it was me. That's Valentine's Day, that's tomorrow. 
I had a dream that somebody left flowers at my doorstep. What would it be like for you to buy yourself those flowers? And to enjoy the flowers. And not just buy the cheapy tulips from the petrol station, but to go and buy yourself one or two really beautiful roses or whatever your favorite flower is. I love peonies. It's too early for peonies. But something that's just makes you go, oh, and softens you, softens you. You feel hopeless because you are not letting the energy come through. A daily spiritual practice where you stop. Now, right now, I'm not holding a cup of tea. I've got juice. Hold your drink. Feel your hands on whatever container it is. Bring yourself in. Ask for this container to be filled with love, filled with healing, and then take a drink. Relish the taste of it in your mouth. Even if it's water, it'll taste better because it's been healed. And as you swallow it, feel it going into your body, going down your throat and into your stomach, past your heart, and softening every part of you. You see, I'm not waving a magic wand and fixing you. You have to do it. You have to let it in, and you have the capacity to do it. It's just maybe nobody ever told you how. But that's why I'm here. Ask me how. I've got so many things I can show you how to do it. I've got energy healing books. I've got the diary with affirmations. I've got these videos. There's past videos on Facebook. Invest in yourself. Make the time and learn how can I look after myself better? How can I have more compassion for me? Ask those questions and then be opening to the answers. Okay, here's a lovely, lovely question. I'm a sensitive person. I often pick up other people's energies. I try to protect myself from picking the energies up, but I find it so difficult. So I would like to know more about how to protect myself from other people's energies and also how to avoid leaking my own energy. And I've noticed here that somebody has asked, what's the best way to protect your energy from an energy vampire? So the answer is the same for energy vampire, it's the same for this. So anyone, anyone who's, Rita, can you not hear me? Can you guys hear me? Because Rita here says she can't hear me. So just let me know if you can't hear me and I can end the video and I can come back and do another one. Okay, so the question is, how do I protect my energy, right? So it depends very much on who you are. So there is no blanket one statement that will protect everybody. All right. Now, there's a lot of people out there who learn prayers, call in 15 different angels, 14 different colors into their aura. Um, they have a ritual where they, you know, they take this and they do that and they close themselves and they shield themselves and they ask for Archangel Michael's cloak around them and all of these things. If you're doing it, if you're doing it out of your head, if you're doing it by routine and you're not feeling it, you're not meaning it, you're not authentically calling out, then it won't work. So stop doing those things and come into where you are. Ask yourself, what is it about me that allows these people to come and take my energy? Ask yourself, where are my weaknesses and how can I strengthen them? Think of yourself energetically, different lights, different colors, flying, coming out from you and ask yourself, am I sealed? Or you could think of yourself as a house. Imagining yourself as a house, have I left my back door open? Have I left the front door open? Can anybody just walk up into my garden and just take from my kitchen without my permission? And just notice, notice what you're doing. And just say, okay, well, how does it feel for me to close the front door? How does it feel for me to get people to go back to the edge of the gate? How does it feel for me to just say not available? And if you feel, oh my God, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't let people not in. I can't set a good, strong, energetic boundary. Then you need to do some work on that. You need to do some work on that. And that takes time. It takes time and it takes learning. And again, I've got lots and lots of material that you can use. I've got Energy Healing Made Easy, that book, and I've got a Hay House video course of the book. So you can dip in and out to different lessons of that and see me on the video teaching those things. So that's kind of fun. I hope that answers. Do you have any more questions on that? T Zina, I don't know how to say your name. Best way to protect your energy from an empire, energy vampire is to say no. Yay, you guys can hear me. Fantastic. Okay, Susanna's in tears. 
to love oneself is very hard look tiziana what's the best way to protect your energy from an energy look if the energy vampire is somebody you love dearly it's very difficult to say no to them but you have to learn how the way the way that i see it everybody try this exercise we're going to do an exercise on energy boundaries okay energy boundaries imagine that you're standing in a field can you do that you're standing in a field just you maybe I could be above you if you're feeling a little bit afraid to be on your own it's beautiful beautiful sunny day and around you are all these rocks and stones now I don't know if any of you've been to Ireland but I'm pretty sure you've all seen photographs of the amazing stone walls that we have here that boundary off the fields so you're going to build yourself a stone wall boundary around yourself in a circle in this field and that's you're going to represent your energetic boundary okay so some of you are only going to make it as high as your knee some of you are just laying out big boulders with spaces in between no good you have to imagine that all these sheep are going to come in and you don't want them coming into your energetic boundary so it has to be strong and then you can make it really high if you want to some of you feel that they need serious protection making it really really high some of you make like a fortress just visualize yourself making it and changing the texture changing the material that you're using so that you don't feel asphyxiated in there you don't feel trapped you can see you can breathe you can be completely yourself it can be transparent but strong does that feel good now make it bigger so shift it out so you're doubling the size of the circle so that you make more space for you how does that feel feel okay okay now here's coming the person who you love who's taking your energy i'm going to say it your mother shows up your sister shows up your auntie shows up your best friend shows up your boyfriend shows up your girlfriend shows up bang what happens to your to your boundaries quick what do they do what does their presence do to you and there's your weakness all right so visualize them standing in the field with you and repair the boundaries while they're there and you do not need to apologize you do not need to say, sorry, mom. And I don't mean my mom here. I mean the general mom, just in case my mom's watching. <laughs> sorry, mom, but you can't come in to my energetic field. And she might have what we call in Ireland a canary, a temper tantrum. She throws a hissy fit. She needs to be inside your boundaries right now. And if you're not strong enough to keep her out there, you have to do some work. I hope this is making sense. Visualize it. Ask yourself, can I keep my partner, my boyfriend, my girlfriend outside so that I have all this space? When you have all of this space energetically, you can be living in a cluttered house. You can be six people in a three bedroom house and it doesn't hurt you as much because energetically you're big and you're strong and it takes work. While I'm here, you know, this kind of work is stuff I do all the time with people. So you can have a session with me if you've never done anything like this before. We could talk or you could join my Raise Your Vibration Bootcamp. I'll share the link there. So it's 21 days of energy work. 21 days. So we do an hour online just like this where we open and we do healing and cleansing. And you can read about that on my website. And then every day I do something with you that takes between 10 and 15 minutes only. You have all day to do it. You do it with me. Then you learn how to do it for yourself. That every day you've done 10 minutes on your energy yourself. You're in a group with some amazing people who are already talking and laughing and enjoying just being together. Because boot camp, I do it twice a year. And this is, I think, is my fifth year. So I've got people who regularly come back all the time. And if you come back, if you've done it before, you get a lifetime discount because you always need a top up. Oh, we always have great fun. And at the very end, we do a closing webinar. So all you need is email and a computer to join me on 10 minutes a day. And it starts on Tuesday next week, 18th of February. I'll put the details up. So I have one more question here from earlier. I hope I've answered that. I'm taking prescribed medication for different ailments and I feel that they affect my vibration and energy. Is there a way to work and help alongside my medication? Now, this is a really interesting question because, again, I can't make a blanket sweeping general statement for everybody, right? So it depends on you, depends on your physical makeup, and it depends on the level of empath that you are 
for want of a better word, if you're a light worker, if you're highly sensitive and this shuts you down completely and you just can't feel anything, you just can't feel anything and the medicine that you're taking might need to be what you need to be doing right now. So all I can suggest is that you peel away everything that's not you and reconnect into what is you so you can start to notice how I'm feeling. How am I feeling? Am I happy? Am I slightly happy? Am I sad? Um, you know, and start to monitor and get used to checking in with yourself. And it's, you know, it's phenomenal to me how many people don't do this. To me, it's something I do regularly all the time. How to be well. I would do a show and tell if I can't reach the book. How to be well is one of my first books that I wrote. And I have a wellness scale on a scale of one to 10, where zero, zero to 10, where zero is really crappy. I just want to spend the whole day in bed and I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to get up and 10 is hyper and I'm so happy for life and I'm almost manic. And you have that scale of one to 10, whether you're on medication or not, you can guess or feel or ask or, you know, connect into your inner self and say, okay, where am I on the scale today? And it's a really useful thing to do because you want to be about a five or a six or a seven. Most of the time you could be an eight or a nine if you're doing well, if you're 10, you might need to, you know, calm down, have some calm down time. And if you're zero, you need a first aid plan. Who do you phone? What do you do? How do you look after yourself when you're feeling that low? But you don't just wake up one day and feel that low. So if you start checking in now and you realize I'm a five, I'm a five, I'm a four, I'm a four, I'm a four and a half, I'm a five, I'm a four, I'm a three, I'm a three, I'm a two, oh no, I'm a two. What do I do in case I go down to one? I have to do something. And this is you stepping up and being responsible for yourself. This is you seeing yourself in your life situation with everything that you're capable of and everything that you're not capable of and looking after yourself. And that's not hopeless. That is wonderful. That is self-care. People have this idea about self-care is like getting your nails done. I don't have my nails done. Going to get your hair done. Okay, my hair is a bit crazy today. Self-care is going to a spa and getting a massage now that's pampering self-care is drinking your water every day self-care is going for a walk self-care is calling a friend and saying i feel like shit today can i get some support from you that's self-care self-care is eating proper food and getting to bed on time self-care is switching off the news there is nothing selfish about self-care there really, really isn't. So I'm going to just see, is there any more questions? Cheryl, loving how to be well program. Oh, Cheryl, I'm so happy you are. My how to be well book, I haven't made an audio, but I'm thinking this year, there's a long year ahead, I'm thinking I'm going to record how to be well and heal your inner wounds as audio books for Audible and release them both at the same time. Fingers crossed, that's my plan. It was actually was my plan last year, but I was sick. But I'm better now, so I'm going to do it this year. But I made an online program for How to Be Well to take you through the work of the book because it's big work. I mean, I can sit here and say all these things. If you replay this video, I promise you, everything I'm suggesting to you could take you six months to learn how to do it. And that's a long time without support. So it's great to have, you know, the sense that there's somebody there with you alongside you on the journey. So what did I say I was going to do? Valentine's Day Survival Guide. Yep, done that. Energy healing. Kind of talking about that. Yeah, raising your vibration, bringing in the love. Do you want to raise your vibration a little bit more? Because it's, it's 30 minutes. I can go for a few more minutes. And you have time here. You can ask me a few more questions. I'm just going to scroll up and down and see if there's anything that I've missed. Why would you want to raise your vibration? Okay, raising your vibration, so heavy and slow vibrations. It's like that wellness scale and how to be well. Heavy and slow vibrations could be, well, anger is very fiery. Jealousy, greed, um, guilt. To me, guilt is one of the heaviest vibrations. Guilt solidifies and you hold guilt in your body and your stomach. And I do so many energy healing, you know, pieces of work with people where I remove lumps and solidified chunks of old, old, old guilt that has wrapped itself around intestines and lower intestine, colon, everything, and it can destroy your digestive system. These things are real, okay? Doctors are never going to admit to it because they can't measure them, but you know it's the truth. Stress in your body, 
is real and you can't see it, but you could see the results of it. Guilt that you're holding is real, but you can't see it. You could see the results of it. And heavy, heavy energies can lead to depression because you're heavy and you're heavy and you're heavy. So you're sinking from five back to four, back to three, back to two. So raising your vibration brings you up. So I think the highest vibrations that we can hold as the human beings that we are would be, well, peace is, isn't neutral. It's more high than neutral. It would be love and joy and gratitude. And that's why, which I find it's, it's wonderful, the mindfulness trainers and the positive psychology now is saying make a gratitude list because then you remember the things that you're grateful for. Now, this can be really hard if you're not able to resonate with it because you've dropped your vibration so much that here's the gratitude and here's you and you just just aren't connecting but you can start to climb back up by you know okay well i'm grateful that my feet are working i'm grateful because i love m m's and i can buy as many m m's as i want you know and you start from there and you work your way up and you bring in but what i like to do is sit in stillness and just like we open to unconditional love, imagining that we're changing the radio station and we're the receiver, and we're gonna tune into the energy of gratitude. So everybody try and do that now. We're gonna close with this, this exercise. So put your feet in the ground, take a breath with me. And slowing down. And we can do this so much quicker now than we used to be able to. So imagining the little dial in your head's going, okay, where's gratitude, gratitude, gratitude? When was I grateful in my life, the most grateful I've ever been? And what did that feel like? And oh, yes, I remember. Feel how high and light and fast that is. And you're, okay, I'm going to connect into that feeling. I'm going to connect into the universal force of energy, life force energy. You know, people call it prana, chi, reiki, whatever you'd like to call it. But they're calling that in now to flow through my entire body, all the way down, down my legs, out through my feet, over my shoulders, down my arms, and out through my hands, and just notice how your body softens and relaxes. Now, if you did this for 10 minutes every day, how would your whole day be? Instead of waking up in the morning, reaching for your phone, looking at your emails, reading all the stuff about the coronavirus and bombs in different countries and climate change and things being canceled and elections, there's elections in Ireland, elections in America, all this kind of crazy stuff. Don't do it if you wake up in the morning instead and you stretch and you open your energy and you connect into that high vibration, feeling light of gratitude or unconditional love to say, I release the blocks in me to receiving this and just imagining it trickling down until you really start to feel it and you will feel it. It can be like fizzy champagne bubbles and it fills you up. It doesn't go over your body, goes in you and through you and down your body, down your legs. And just breathe it in. We'll do it now. And breathe out all the heavy stuff. So I'm breathing out my disappointment with myself because dot, dot, dot. Breathing in gratitude because I get to do it again, I get to have another chance. I'm breathing out the heavy food that I ate at lunchtime. I'm breathing in and softening and saying, I'm open to learning how to love myself more. Now, how does that feel? Say it, I am open to learning how to love myself more. It doesn't hurt, does it feel good? I'm gonna throw in a couple more. I will never abandon myself. Now, some of you have immediately go, oh, I don't know about that. Why don't you know? That's your work. Okay, very strong on that. You have to do this work. You have to. You know, if you cannot say with 100% certainty, I will never abandon myself, why do you expect your boyfriend or your girlfriend to never abandon you? There's always that fear, isn't there? There's that fear that they're going to leave. And then who are you left with? Nobody. Why? Because you don't have yourself. And that's what you need to heal. When you allow love in through you, it flows through your body and outwards and you have more love in your life. All of the relationships that you have in your life start with the relationship that you have to yourself. It's the truth. Oh, Jamie, lovely to see you. I'm glad you found me too. 
there's a couple of new people joining i'll just hang on here for another minute if anybody else has any questions for me on anything to do with energy healing unconditional love being strong, energetic boundaries and just know that, yes, there are such things as energy vampires. So when we go back to that beautiful meadow where we made our strong, energetic boundaries in our mind, always go back and check. Is it broken? Did somebody smash it in? Does somebody want something? Because they're lazy and they won't do their work they want to take from you. Now, I need you to know that it is not deliberate. They are not doing this in their head. It's just what their energy is doing and somehow you are allowing it to happen so stop allowing it stop allowing it so suzanne thank you for being there so many things to learn oh you're very welcome i actually had the most wonderful morning today i'll just share this with you i had a, a student in college who's writing a thesis about psychotherapy and shamanism and how they fit together and it was just the most wonderful conversation and to see young people who are beginning to be trained and to realize that talking about stuff is not enough well that's what i believe you can't just talk about stuff you have to bring in that healing you have to allow that flow come through you so you feel softer and able to let go of that guilt let go of the stress to feel safe in the world in a world where they're telling you you're not safe that's what the problem is. So going back to those very questions here, um, I'm having a hard time loving myself and being patient with myself because you're being told all the time you're not safe. How are you dealing with that? I sound like Carol at Miss now. I'm shouting at you. I'm not shouting at you. I'm saying to you, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. All of the messages and all of the newspapers, all of the TV, even the TV shows, the books, everything around you is telling you you're not safe. It's telling you you're not good enough. And now you're trying to come to be at peace with yourself and you can't. It's no surprise. I can't seem to remember who I am anymore. Well, you're being told by 57,000 different people who you are and none of it is true. So stop listening and stop trying to be gaining approval from them and just say to yourself, this is my one and only life. What do I want to do with that? And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye and I'll continue chatting with you in the comments. And this has been really fun. All right. Bye-bye.